fabulous brother educators. And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. It's- Good morning, everyone. Where were you on the night of July 31st, 19th? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't guarantee there will be all of us together, right? But (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Welcome to At Your Side Virtually. I'm Angela Wolf. I am a Brother Brand Ambassador. And today we have the fabulous Brother Educator, Louis Carney. This is going to be so much fun. So if you've never been here before, say hi. Say where you're from. We have taken over Brothers Facebook and YouTube page for the sewing and crafting side. And Lewis has a really fun project today. Although I could have Lewis said, how long is the show going to be? I'm like, well, we could go on for four hours. I have so much fun with him. So say hi, say where you're from, and let's bring up Lewis. Hey, Lewis, how are you? Hi, everyone. Hi, Angela. Hi to all my friends out there. Sorry, we can't still be in person yet, but hopefully soon. We're going to get a chance to see each other again. And thank you, Angela, for having me again. I love being with you. Um, We have so much fun together. And Angela said that she really inspires me. So it really makes me get creative. And that's one of the things that I want to share with you guys today uh, is how to maybe get out of your boxes and get creative. Have some fun. Oh, this is going to be so much It's so exciting. But Lewis, I got to ask you a question because I know that everyone here that watched the show last month when you were on, we want to know, did you get your bathroom finished? Uh, Yes and no. (laughs) It's in the process. I um, got a lot more done than I thought I would, but then we had some family interruption, so I had to take a break. So um, it's it's coming along. Okay, okay. Well, we want Be pictures sure when it's guys when I get done. When it gets finished, I'll show you. Awesome, awesome. So I heard that you are doing something very cool on the machine today. You're going to show us a very cool feature, and it's one that I have to say, even you and I were talking about this. There are so many years that I never paid one bit of attention to this itsy bitsy feature. I shouldn't say so many years, but there's been a long time I didn't pay any attention. And all of a sudden, when you start using it, it's like, where has this been all my life? (laughs) (laughs) So many days. So many days. That's it. So what are you going to show us today, Lewis? Well, I would like to show you guys and share with you a function called the border feature. And the border feature is on any of our brother machines that have these little boxes um, in your embroidery edit mode. So it's not just the top of the line that has these functions. It is on any of our machines when you go to embroidery edit that has the um, little boxes and we'll show that to you when we go to the machine so you can see that your machine has it. And if yours doesn't, it will be the perfect time for you to get one that does because, oh my goodness, it is so much you can do with it. And you can even combine it with the applique function and then send it to scan and cut so you can make it work with your scan and cut on top of the border feature. It's so cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So we are, Cindy, uh, Cindy says, Lewis, where's all your bling today? Well, all my bling is in my samples today. So my bling is going to be, I didn't want to outshine my samples. So <laughs> I decided that I would let the samples do the blinging. So oh. here we have the border feet. And this is where you're creating your own embroidered fabric. Now, I obviously am here working alone with my cameras, so I cannot bring out the whole thing, but I have yardage of this. I just, and you use your, the new magnetic sash frame, guys, if you don't have it, oh my God, you want to get it because it would be so perfect for this function to be able to just slide your fabric and then start embroidering again slide your fabric start embroidering again you know you see fabrics that are embroidered like this that you know run upwards 60 80 90 100 i've seen them 400 and you know in new york we have i mean we have garment history i've seen fabrics you know thousand dollars a yard that are embroidered like that well i can just buy six dollar a yard silk and do it myself 
So I was like, I can do this myself. I have a machine that will make my own embroidered fabric. So it's really cool. You can also use it to create. If you guys hang out with us, um, we're going to do um, fusible name tags. So when you got to do, you know, hopefully you're going to start traveling again and or, you know, kids will be going back to school or whatever it is. You know, you always need name tags to go on stuff. So I'm going to show you how to create all of them, you know, in one hooping and boom, all you do is cut them out, iron them on it, or you can tie them and then you got to hang name tag and it's going to be so fast and so easy. You're going to not believe how fast and easy it is. But using that same feature, uh, you guys may remember and seeing this is how we can create our own beautiful lace. So we can create gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lace right on the machine because we can stitch right with rows and rows and rows of stitches right on the uh, border feature and it'll line up everything for us. So that's how you can create it. This was created by my good friend. Um, and so she designed the shirt, Carol. So I want to give her credit because she did design it and it is beautiful. But, oh, my God, the technique can be applied to so many places. It's so easy. And I want to just show you guys. how It's so exciting. I mean, and like I said, any machine that has the water feature can do this. So don't think it's only top of the line. I love this. And I love that shirt, by the way. In fact, we were just doing a bunch of decorative stitches. Uh, I was working on a couple projects this weekend. I never even thought of utilizing that to line these up. Um, Look at what you just said that and I've got to share this now because yet again, another function of using the border feature is to be able to put your decorative stitches in the hoop and your machine is going to line them up and stitch them out beautifully for you. And it's in the hoop so it comes out straight and perfect. You don't have to worry about it. It'll be just so gorgeous. And you see, I'm using metallic thread. You guys know I love my metallic threads. And this is the Brother Metallic. I use it with a top stitch needle. I do stand the thread up to use it. So I put the thread vertically and it just comes out gorgeous. It, you don't have any problems with that. So look, I mean, you said decorative stitches. I mean, look at this piece. Is this like so amazing? This is like so beautiful. And I don't oh say it's beautiful. Because I did it. It's beautiful because the machine did it. But this That's is again, all metallic. And then I've done where you couch over your ribbon. And look at how my ribbon matches my fabric exactly. And that's because it's not ribbon. That will be another class. We won't give I away everything today. We can make ribbon out of thread. And same thing here. In this little bag, this little evening bag. So again, rows of stitches. And I know it takes a second to. Now look at how gorgeous this is. This is a decorative stitch in, and I'm going opposite the way the camera's going. <laughs> this is a decorative stitch that is on, um, where am I pointing? <laughs> there, this one. So you can stitch on top of a stitch on top of a stitch. But look at all the rows of stitching. This is just taking a plain piece of fabric and turning it into, I mean, you know, you might have a wedding coming up. You might have something uh, fancy that you need uh, or, you know, proms, graduations, hopefully are going to be coming back. Make a little evening bag for them. That's, I mean, how beautiful would that be? And it's so easy. That's what's so nice about all of this is so easy. And of course, you guys know, like I said, I didn't want to take away from the samples. So, again, here's my eye candy. So, I didn't wear it. I'm showing it. So, this, oh, is, I love it. this is silver metallic thread. And it is stitched all in the hoop. And then I took, um, went to my scan and cut and did a rhinestone template using the rhinestone kit. But this goes all the way down the back of a shirt. So, guys, you know, if you have... A special guy in your um, life that you want to do something special for. This is something that's really, really an, a showstopper. You know, you got a dinner party 
or get them ready for New Year's for this year. Hopefully this New Year's, you're going to be able to go out and go party and have a good time. So isn't that the truth? Hey, Lewis, uh, Deborah wants to know, is there anything special when you're using metallic thread? What are you using the bobbin? I use Brother Prewound 99% of the time, unless it's double faced. But 99% of the time, I just use a Brother Prewound bobbin. Great question, Deborah. Yes, that is because, you know, I talked about the needle, talked about how you put the thread, but the bobbin is important too. And uh, I use my open toe foot a lot when I'm doing the decorative stitches. So you want to make sure to contact your dealer, get an open toe foot. They come both metal and plastic. And I swore I wasn't going to be swinging around, but I'm going to so I can see if I can grab that quick since someone brought it up. <laughs> Hey, Lewis, while you're looking that up, Cindy, I love this, Cindy. Uh, we all know what Lewis's favorite thread is. What is Lewis's favorite fabric? I think we, I think he froze for a sec. Did you hear that, Lewis? I'm just checking. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. You froze I for a sec. Oh, okay. I'm back, hopefully. So this is an open toe foot and it has markings on it so that you can see easily how to line something up. It comes plastic and it comes metal. And everyone always asks, well, which one do you get? Well, you know, you get both because you need to be able to have them for different things. The metal is great for weighted when you need something on something you would think that you wouldn't want that on like chiffon or something soft or lightweight, but you need the weight of that metal foot. And the clear one is great for when you need to be able to see through to match up exactly at intersections. So you want to have both. Perfect. All right. So Lewis, we, we lost you for one second. And Cindy, Cindy had a question for you. And she just said, we all know that you love metallic thread. What is your favorite fabric? My favorite fabric is silk. <laughs> I thought that I was going to guess it, but I just had to make sure. <laughs> I'm with you on that. High I five. Love silk is my favorite too. I love silk. I love silk dupioni. It is just, it's. I just can do so many things with it. And okay, I'm gonna get off topic, even though I said I wasn't. I promise, Angela, I would stay focused today. However, <laughs> that would not be fun at all. Take, I know, right? That would be boring. That wouldn't be Lewis. So. We're going to be Lewis. Well, if you take Silk Dupioni and you get your brother needle felting kit and you felt the Silk Dupioni to itself with nothing else, it will turn it into pebble and add a gorgeous texture. I'll have to do that another time. I'll share it with you. I promise I'll come back and show if Angelo will have me back. I will share that with you another time. But Silk. I love that. So hey, going back to your uh, metallic thread uh, while you're showing that real quick, while you're showing that, Lewis, uh, do you have to change anything on your tension? A couple people are just talking about when they sew with or, you know, with a metallic thread or do embroidery, they have issues with the tension. OK, then they are probably not using free wound bobbin, a top stitch needle and brother metallic. I do not change anything. Lewis is from New York. If you cannot sew it fast, I don't sew it. So I leave my machine going a thousand stitches a minute. I set it, I go, and I'm done. I don't think about it. I just let it go. This is all silver metallic again. Here we go. And then this has in it the um, scan and cut crystals with your rhinestone kit. And again, I apologize. I'm, the camera is so backwards to me today. I don't know what's wrong. I'm usually not that bad. But <laughs> you're doing great. The feature is how it lines up everything, guys. This is what does that. And I just think, I mean, how stunning is that? Now, I mean, of course, I'm a guy, so I did it for me. But, you know, I mean, you could do it for anybody. Or, you know, wouldn't that be great on a vest? Or wouldn't this be a gorgeous pillow? Oh, my God, that would be a stunning, stunning pillow. So don't even, you know, or even, you know, for me, I don't do traditional quilting. I'm not a, you know, I'm not doing log cabin and sun bonnet suit. I'm sorry. It's not. If you do, that's fine. I have good, more power to you. I'm not. But this will be a gorgeous quilt block, an embroidered quilt block. 
So, you know, try and think about how you sew and where you what where you could use this, because there's so many ways you can use this function, this feature in what it is that you sew. If you're doing home decorating, if you're quilting, garment sewer, no matter what, there's a reason to use the border feature. And I'm going to show this is also this is our border hoop. Now, the border hoop allows you. And I'm going to see if I can make it spring at the same time. <laughs> if I hit the buttons. Oh, I, there it goes. There it is. This pops up. It does not come separate. So all you do is slide the fabric. So this is meant for the edges. So this is going around something. So like down the front of a drapery or on a shower curtain or a bed skirt or you know, around a the hem of a skirt or the hem of a jacket, you could use this kind of a hoop with the border feature. And then you also have the magnetic sash hoop, which that's the newest hoop we have that allows you now see this hoop you can use anywhere. So you could go in the middle of something. So when you want to do continuous and embroider all over and make like embroidered fabric, I would recommend the magnetic sash hoop because that's gonna let you just slide your fabric in any direction pretty much and line it up and then you just start it again and it'll look continuous. So make sure to ask your dealers about that because they are fantastic, they're um, wonderful and they're easy to use. I agree, I agree. That magnetic hoop, I absolutely love, absolutely love. I haven't used the border, the border hoop as much. I used to years ago and I guess I just forgot about it, but that new magnetic <laughs> one, that's First thing I grab. <laughs> we do. We forget about the border one. And the nice thing with the border one, like I said, in particular, if you're going around a, a skirt or going around a jacket or going down a drape or in the border on a quilt, um, it's great because it keeps stuff just lined up. It just keeps it straight. You just pop it up, slide, slap it back down and go. Pop it up, slide, go. It's wonderful. So yeah. don't, you know, we have to remember some of our things that we, are old to us, but they're new to other people. So they're very fun and they're easy. That's the biggest thing with Lewis. It has to be easy. Nothing I've shown. You don't make it, you make it look easy. Uh, but you know, before you show us those tips though, Lewis, you got a few questions here again about the metallic thread and, uh, and then that jacket you just showed. Cindy wants to know, did you stitch it first and then put the rhinestones in? She's thinking that that would melt if you okay. pressed it, it would melt the thread. Let's see. Yes, you have to. You have to still first because obviously the, your needle won't go through a crystal. So you want to make sure to embroider. So um, and the threads are color fast. You know, I have metallic thread on denim and, you know, I throw it in the wash and throw it in the dryer. I iron, them. you know, yeah. so threads are color fast. They're heat resistant. So no problems with anything like that. So but you would have to embroider it first so that then the crystals can go on top. Um, otherwise, if you put the crystals down, try to embroider it, then you might as well get you a new machine. <laughs> oh, that's, that is so, so true. Hey, that border hoop that you have, mine actually was from my Quattro years ago. Uh, the so, border yeah. hoop that you have there, which machine does that go on? The, so anything from the Quattro, so that'll tell you how far back the border hoops goes. Um, for those of you that don't know, the Quattro was our top of the line machine Oh, wow. <laughs> it's been a, a few years ago um, and we had it then. So, yes, any especially any top of the line machines that always works. And the great thing I love about Brother is that especially if you go top of the line, top of the line, top of the line, you get the new one comes out. You want it, you get the new one. Any of your old stuff, 99 percent of it is going to work with the new. So very few things don't transfer. I mean, li literally like two, three pieces don't. I mean, other than that, if you have an old border hoop, you don't have to buy a new one. You can use that on your new machine. Yeah. And so some people are asking about your specific machine. So call your brother dealer, by the way, because there's quite a few questions on there um, about that. Uh, OK, so here's one pertains to you, though. What size top stitching needle is your favorite? Which one's the one that you grab most of the time? Nope. Needle size is based on weight of fabric, period. Not a such thing as a favorite. So if I'm doing 
cotton, I'm going to use an 80 top stitch with metallic threads. If I'm doing something that's cotton and batting, I might do 90. Very seldom have I used 100, but there are occasions when I would. But, you know, so I have all of them. <laughs> it's best to have all of them so that you're prepared. Absolutely. And so, hey, Amber, you're 770. Just call your brother dealer and check that. And I see some people asking about prices and stuff. Call your brother dealer for that. That's um, And then uh, the last thing, the Stellaire, which is an awesome machine. So by the oh, way, the yeah. magnetic hoop that you saw that will not work on that. The magnetic hoop is for the Luminaire. And then there's a separate one for the new 10 needles. So keep that in mind, but call your brother dealer. All right, back to you, the Lewis. The border hoop will work on the Luminaire, on the Stellaire. So you can use the border hoop on the Stellaire. So that is uh, gonna be your next option. So here we go again Ooh. with stitches in the hoop. And does that red th ribbon down the center look absolutely gorgeous and perfect? Again, oh because gosh. not ribbon, it's thread. So we couch over the thread to make it look like ribbon. And all of your decorative stitches line up perfectly and gorgeously. You guys are going to love this. I just, I, it's so much fun. I mean, it, it's just so much fun. That's all I can say. I was playing and doing things with it even this morning when I was waiting, you know, um, before I talked to Angela. And I was like, you know what? I wonder, can I do this? So again, I'm showing you stuff like this. This is straight, okay? The things I'm going to show you today are, I'll show you how to do something straight like this, a grid kind of thing. But I'm going to go way outside of the box with this. We are not going to just keep it. This is kind of, I mean, it looks wow because of that, but it's not, um, it's boring. I mean, this is boring. It's just a grid. It's a boring shirt. I mean, it's got an embroidery on it with crystals. It's boring. But it looks good because, you know, the metallic thread and the crystals. But I'm going to show you how to make it really wow and how to really do some cool stuff with the border feature. I can't wait. All right, so take us over to the machine. All right, guys, so we're ready to go to the machine and start looking at some of this cool stuff. Well, we're gonna go over to our machine. And I'm sorry, I had to take a sip of coffee. <laughs> Good idea. Hmm. So at the machine, uh, yeah, take a breather, right? So at the machine, we're on the home screen. Again, this does not have to be the Luminaire. Any machine that has the border feature can do this. So don't be feel like, oh, this doesn't apply to me because I don't have the top of the line. Quattro, Dream Machine, still there. I mean, there's so many models that have this function on it. So look at your model and you can tell right away. And I'm going to just go real quick to show you how you could tell immediately. We're going to first go to embroidery. And when we go to embroidery, Oh, I have my, I'm like, why won't my machine go and do anything? Well, I was cleaning my screen and I locked it so it wouldn't. So <laughs> we have to unlock. You know, tell it to unlock. And now we can go to embroidery. And I'm simply going to pull up a pattern. And when I pull up a pattern, I'm just going to pull up anything, guys, so you can see really quick. Okay, when we're in embroidery edit, you tap on edit. And in edit, you're going to look for these nine little boxes. So those nine boxes, there are going to be um, five of them are dark blue and then four are in the whitish color. But if you have those boxes, you have border. So that's how you know, really easy. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go back home on the screen, of course, and I'm going to pull up an embroidery again. Now, let's start and go into our different patterns because i want to show you something just really quick fast and basic just to get you going right show you how cool this is so i'm in category four on this particular machine and this is one of my most favorite favorite designs i love this pattern and that's one of the ones actually that's on one of my shirts and so i need to be able to use this with the border feature but i need it smaller so we're going to go edit and it's going to let us change our size and I'm going to use my recalculate. Now, the difference here is that scaling and recalculation. Scaling will change the stitch size, but it will not change the stitch count. 
resize will recalculate the stitch and the density and the stitch and the stitch count when you select that. So if you're doing something like going from a quarter inch to three eighths inch, okay, you don't need to recalculate. But if you're going from a two inch down to a half an inch or vice versa, you'll need those stitches to be recalculated so that it maintains the integrity of the design. So right now, I'm just going to make it as small as I can go. And I'll just tap and hold, and let it shrink in. And you go click, click, and that's how you'll know it's small. And I'm doing this for a reason. And so, you know, we can just drag and drop on our screen. So I'm dragging over and I'm going to go back to my edit capabilities. And I need another one of these. And I'm not going to use border right away because I want these staggered. If you go to your regular border, we'll just do it so you can see it. So in border, you have the options to work vertically or you can tell it to work horizontally. So then it can go horizontal. So we'll just do horizontal since I'm there. And I'm all the way in my lower left corner on my screen. So that means I can add to the right or I can add to the top. So when I tap and tap and tap, it just continues to add the patterns automatically straight across for me. I also can control the spacing. So I can say, oh, these are so close together. I don't want them quite that close together. So I can spread them out. And I just tap and hold, and there you have it. Well, if I wanted to do like my shirts, for example, and I need the whole hoop filled in with this same repeat, we're going to go back to vertical. And when we go to vertical and add to the top and add to the top, and let's see if we can get one more. Look, I can't get one more. It says, no, you can't get another one in there. It will go outside of the embroidery area. So it does warn you. But you know, Lewis, he likes to trick things. He does not like that. I don't want you to tell me I can't do something. So <laughs> I'm going to actually reduce the spacing. And so look at that. Now I've dragged them in and the little tail from the previous one is now inside of the top of that one. You have to move this all the way down. And then we can probably add another one to the top. To keep it in the hoop centered, then you tap your move your move arrows, tap the centering icon, and it's centered. That's how easy it is to do this shirt, guys. It's done. Now all you do is embroidery. It really is quite that simple and that fast. But I just wanted to give you a taste of the basic. Now let's see if we wanted something a little more interesting. So we're going to go OK and get out of this screen. And I'm going to just get rid of all of this and go back and pull up that same pattern. That's just the fastest way. We'll resize it again down to the smallest. Lewis, I love that effect when you can resize it down. That's one of my favorite things because then you know it's going to stitch well, too. Oh, and you know, of course, on this machine, I'm showing the recalculate and using the arrow keys. But, you know, all I have to do is pinch and drag on this machine, guys. If I want it bigger, if I want it smaller, if I, as long as I'm in that size cap icon, I can simply just drag. I don't have to worry about holding and tapping. You can just pinch it in or pinch it out. So now that I have my one and it's as small as I can get it, I'm going to move it down again over to the side. And the reason I'm doing that is because now instead of border, we're going to use duplicate. So we're going to use our basic copy and paste. And when we tell it to give us another one, there's my second, right? So I'll move it over so you guys can see. There it is. And if you're looking for a precise and accurate position, I cannot tell you enough how much zoom comes in handy. You can zoom. And so when you zoom, you can see exactly how close. I mean, I can even go up one more if I really need to see how close these stitches are. So I might want to move that one a little closer. You know, it's really just a personal preference. It's up to you. So now that I have these two staggered like this, we need to put them together so that the machine sees both of them. So we're going to use our selection icon and we're going to select both of these. So I have both of them selected. 
And now with both of them selected, you notice my border is grayed out. I can't use border, right? Well, why not? Well, because it sees two separate things. Even though we told it to select both, they're not one. It can only use border to do one thing at a time. But if we group them, and we use our little circle and square up here, notice what became active. And did you see the red box go around both of them now? So now, instead of having two separate red boxes and two independent designs, the machine sees this as one pattern. So now, if I go to border, I can simply tell it to put in a second one and add it right there, and I need it to be closer. So again, we reduce our spacing. So we're going to simply tap and hold until they get closer together. Move this further down. And then I can make it go even closer if I want to add another one to the top. So that's how you can use it to combine to get really interesting patterns and designs. So now we're going to set, go and add another one over on the side. And look at how cool this is getting. Well, oh, I love I, that. Isn't that neat? Yeah, now, very I cool. Now, if I fit two more, I could probably fit one. So what I'm going to do is separate these. So that I can tell it, I want you to put one. So we're going to go to our little drop down arrow and it says, well, what do you want to separate? It has this first box with a red around it, right? That was the first one. And that's fine with me. And I needed to se separate them uh, horizontally, which is going to be a vertical cut. So if you notice, it's got a cut line right here. It's showing me I'm going to cut this here. Is that OK? Or you can tell it where to cut. So you move the arrow to make it go to where you want it to cut. And now it's cut and separated these into separate pieces. So now when I go back home and I ungroup and I tell it, no, I only want to see, oops, we need to reset that. We don't want to see any of those. Tell it there. We're going to tell it only that one. And I'm going to copy that one again. But now, see, I can take that one and I'm going to use my finger right now because I need to move this over to the side, go move, and we're going to use our arrows. Now, this is also a time when people always want to know if you can drag things on your screen or if you can simply make them bigger or smaller, um, why do you use the arrows? And sometimes like that had the design right on top of it. If you double tap accidentally, you'll select the bottom one and it'll move that one. And you'll be like, oh, my God, I moved the wrong one. Well, of course, fortunately, we do have undo on this machine to be able to not have to go through that. Well, I need to have one here and one there. Well, I'm not going to copy and paste those things. I'm going to leave that one selected and go back to the border. It still has the vertical. So we'll add two to the top and we'll simply space them out. Now, notice it clicked at me. It said I can't put any more space. So this is a little trick for you guys a little tip it can't add any more space because this needs to move so we need to move this up so that it can add spacing so now when we tap and hold the stretch and do you see it stretching out now because see it stretches out to the bottom and then we could move it up some more and stretch it out some more and do you see like now perfect i didn't even have to tell it copy and paste and drag and position each one well, I need to have two more across that way. So we're going to go horizontal. We're going to make sure that we have what we want selected. So we've got that one and we'll tell it OK. And then we're going to go back to the border. It lets me know that it's going to change the format in which it sells out. We're going to ungroup them so that we only have the one selected. And in border, we're going to go horizontal and I'm going to add two to the left. And again, space that out. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm going to be quiet. Click, 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 click. Ever heard that? That's not my <laughs> chair. That was my chair. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, you know what, Louis? You better be more specific. You're going to get a lot of imaginations going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, that was the chair. That wasn't the machine. So don't think that that was the machine. Again, if <laughs> Trying to add space, but it doesn't have room.
because it spaces to the right. And see, the design is all the way to the right. So if we move this whole piece over to the left, so we'll go ahead and just hold it down, drag it over. I'm going to move it up and again, click, click. And so now I can add my space and voila, look, my shirt is done. But look at how much more interesting that is versus just straight up and down grid. That's like such a you know much cooler pattern and adds a lot more interest into the pattern. But I mean, it's just so easy to be able to do that. Now, the really cool thing is that, okay, you said, all right, I want to ungroup these because say, for example, I want this one, this one, this one, certain ones, we want to do certain things, right? So we're going to take, separate that one, tell it, I'm going to go here and that's now selected all of those. We're going to um, go back to that because we want to make sure it's all centered. So now it's centered. We'll reset. It'll let me now choose which ones I want. And it's got that one selected. And if I tap another one and I go set and you can select it and the select arrow puts a red box around things, right? So that's really kind of faint. I hope you guys can see it as it jumps. I'm just tapping the select arrow, but it's moving a red box. So the red box is showing you which one it's selecting. And I'm gonna set that one. And I'm gonna come and just go choose another random one. And we'll set that one. So now I have three of those selected. That's how it knows those three. So when I tell that OK and I group those three things together, it has those three things only. Even though the red box is around everything, it's only selecting the ones that I chose in the previous window. I'm going to go to that and tell it I want those to be a different color. So we can come and choose the ones in the box and it will set the colors accordingly so now it's got a color stop in it so if i wanted all of these metallic and then i wanted these two to be in a embroidery thread because i'm going to do this continuous with my um magnetic sashing hoop that i'm going to have a little variance in it you can change colors independently on things it's just so many things you could play with in here that is so cool I love this border feature. Well, right now, I'm going to go and tell it to go home because I want to use a different function feature in border. Now, almost all of our machines have shapes, right? So if you have an embroidery machine and you have the border feature, you will definitely have shapes. So I'm going to go and I want to choose my little heart. And that's because I love all of you. And I'm going to set it. And so there's my heart. Now, I am going to turn this heart into an applique. So when, if your machine has the little shield on it, and I'll use this to point, so that little shield, that shield with the crown in it is auto applique. Whenever you use auto applique, it does ask you how far away from the pattern you want the applique. We're going to leave our set right on the line and say, OK. But now this is ready to go to scan and cut. Skin and Cut will cut out this heart for me if I wanted it to be an applique. It's so cool. Well, I am going to ungroup them because I only want the applique. I don't want the little black heart outline that we started with. So do you see the little red box? How it gets bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. Well, that lets me know that it selected the inside black one. I don't need that any longer, so I'm going to simply delete that one. Now with that gone, I want a whole second one of these, but I want the points to be touching and kissing. So we're going to tell it to copy and paste, and we'll go to rotate. We'll rotate it twice, and we'll simply move that one down. Now again, for my perfectionist, this is the time you would zoom so that you can make sure that your points are lined up exactly where you want them. Now, I'm doing this just quickly because I have so many other things to share with you guys, but I have both of those selected. So now when I tell it, OK, I'm back on my edit screen, you'll notice it shows only the one. I wanted to use this to do both of those in the border feature. So we need to select both of them. And now that they're both selected, Notice again, 
border is deactivated. I cannot use the border feature. Anybody tell me why? Let's see, Anki, did we get a response on the screen? Can anyone tell me? <laughs> Type in why I can't use that, guys. Tell me why I cannot use the border feature. I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I know there's like a little delay. People are loving this, by the way. And Sherry, <laughs> uh, by the way, you do have this on your Quattro, so double check your machine. So um, Exactly. You do. Oh, Anybody? Anybody? Okay, group them. If he says group them, oh, Caroline says group them. Hey. <laughs> You guys are paying attention. Oh, good. <laughs> Either you're paying attention or you already knew it. <laughs> they're all, they're rolling in. They all got it. <laughs> in the group, remember, I only selected both of them. It still sees them as two independent designs. We have to group them in order for us to be able to use some of the other features. Now it sees them as one. We can use our border feature. So I'm going to just simply drag this down to the bottom, move this, position it, and then I'm going to add to the top. And so look, there I got two more. Well, I probably can't fit another one, so I'm going to space this one out a little bit. And that's spacing down, and we'll move it up so we can give a little space in there. So guys, see, hopefully I'm not, my finger's not on the screen. So I've got a little too much space, so then I can close it in. You know, and you can overlap them. You don't have to. I mean, look at how cute you can get with stuff. You can change, take something and turn it completely different. There's no right. There's no wrong. It's how you want it to be. And if you want yours to have that little peanut in the middle, then you have a heart with a peanut. So there it is. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, you can put like a, a now I'm, all I'm going to think about is a peanut. <laughs> so, I must, it must be lunchtime because I'm thinking about food. So that's it, peanut. So there's my two, right? So now it sees those as one whole thing. Well, I need to get another one across the top and I need to have other ones on the side, right? So we're going to go horizontal and we'll add one to the left and we'll add one to the right. And now we need to knife it. And I call this knifing. We're going to knife it so that it sees where to cut something and it sees it as two separate components. And it asked me to, I can knife it again. So now that it's cut, when anything is cut, these are now separated. I can treat only those. That's the advantage of, even though you use border and group them all together, you can still separate them and treat them independently. Well, I'm gonna tap okay. And I need to see only one, so I'm gonna ungroup it. And I'm gonna use select, so it sees only the one. We're gonna ungroup that and go to set, choose just one. And now this time, because it is upside down already, that's the one that's selected. And notice the three across the top are facing up. Then I do want to use duplicate because I want that one to come and go all the way straight up and we'll put use our move positioning. I could have did this in border because we have move arrows in border. But. So Lewis, while you're moving it, um. There's way more than peanuts there. We've got a bikini top. We've got yeah. lip. <laughs> okay, I was trying to be a gentleman and be polite. Yes, you can see whatever it is that you see in your. <laughs> so there is a lot of things that you can do. These are those things, right? What is those um tests they give you when you go to the psychiatrist? <laughs> the ink spot. That's what this is. The ink spots. You got to sleep. The ink box and tell them what it is. <laughs> We're gonna keep this like that and look how cool is that? But it's not so even. It, 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 it's not done, guys. I want to have a heart in a heart, so I'm gonna ungroup it. Tell it to choose one. I got one. I'm gonna copy that one. I'm gonna tell it to go to size. And this time again, we're going to resize. So we're going to just shrink that one down and see, look, it's like, oh, I can't get any smaller. Notice, is it OK to reset to original position? We say yes. And now it gets really small. We'll edit and rotate it because I want it inside of that one. And so I'll move it down. So now I have that one inside of that one, right? 
Well, the other heart is facing the other direction, right? So, oh my goodness. Well, again, edit, duplicate, rotate. Oh, I'm sorry. See, look, I didn't mean to do that because I wanted, oh, yes, I did because I have to have them together. So, never mind. So, we're going to go ahead and move it down. When you get so excited, you kind of forget stuff. So, I'm moving it. <laughs> Get into position and then okay. Now I'm going to tell it I need to select those two things. I want that one, that little heart, and set. And then I want the other little heart. So you're going to go ahead and use your arrow key to get a red box around it and set that so it sees those two. So now that those are together, we're going to group them and we'll go to border and it's going to change the embroidery order. That's all it's saying. And that's because these are appliques. So we say, okay. And now I have the two right there. And if I add two more on the top and space them out, and then I move them, and I won't go through the whole entire process, but you guys will get the gist of it because now you see, I could continue and fill each one using the border feature. The really, really, really cool thing about this though is I can now send this over to Scan and Cut. Scan and Cut will cut that inside of the two, between the two hearts out. It can cut it out of vinyl. Or if you want to get really creative, you can cut it out of a quilting template, the, the, the clear uh, plastic. If you cut that out of your template, you just now have made a border template to now tape on the wall and your embroidered pillows will match the border that's painted along your wall because you'll use that template to paint your border. Oh my gosh, Lewis, this is so awesome. In fact, I just saw a ton of people that just came in and said, I'm late, don't worry. You can go back and watch this replay because you're gonna wanna watch this over and over. You could watch it on the Brother Facebook page, the Brother YouTube page. I always try to drop it into my blog. I'll make sure I don't miss this one. But what he showed on there is he added the applique because someone's like, I don't get it. How did you switch the hearts? So you got to go back and watch the replay. So I just want to give you a heads up on that. That is awesome. So talk about reverse applique or, uh, you oh know, God. Alabama chaining. <laughs> I mean, like I said, this is now an embroidery design ready to just stitch out. But how cute would that be along a bed skirt or in a pillow? And then you cut this template out of that uh, clear template plastic and paint a border or stamps and make a stencil to paint. I mean, yeah. you have a border to match your pillows. Is that the cutest thing? Oh my gosh, I love this. It is so many, many things I gotta share with you. I'm gonna just go one more and get out of here. Exactly. I'm gonna exactly. run over, but we have also, remember I talked about the lace and I talked about any of my other uh, any of my other things that I share with you guys, okay. Now, do you see on the side of this how that looks like that's the same purple silk? That's actually uh, the thread, but it matches that silk exactly. And that's because you can always find thread to match a color faster than you can a ribbon to match a color. So, you can create a gorgeous band because that f fabric wasn't wide enough. So I made the band look wider by adding the satin stitch on top. But I did the same thing here in my border where I just wanted a decorative stitch, but there is one, two, three, four different stitches to make this one little trim because there's wow. a stitch on top of a stitch because you can add stitches on top of stitches. I'm going to just share with you really quick a really cute. I thought that this was just so when you want to do decorative stitches, especially like I said, if you're doing lace or something like that, you'll want to put that in the hoop so that it goes easy. So this is one of my most favorite stitches to use in the hoop. So there's that stitch, right? So in your border feature, you're going to do the same thing and we'll come and you'll add top, 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 top. So you can't add. Oops, I didn't mean to cut. Go back. It's OK. And we'll add another and add another. And it says it cannot fit to add another. So we'll add at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing. And it tells me it can't. But that's a look at the space at the bottom and the space at the top. Whenever it says that, just move the pattern. 
and then add another one and you'll have it. Now from there, you'll go back, tap OK, add. We'll go back to the decorative stitches and you'll get a different decorative stitch to go next to it. This again, one of my favorites to use that for. Now, even though I won't sew this in a separate color, I will um, change the color of it so that I could see it. So it, do it doesn't have to be sewn in a separate color. Um, and I had the wrong thing uh, selected, but that's okay. That one's red now, the other one is black, I can see it. So we'll move it over, we'll go to border and move it over so you guys can see. And I'm gonna move that one over and just get it moved over out of the way. Now you do not wanna leave that much space. I'm doing that so you guys can see. And now we'll make sure that the right one is selected and do the same thing. You're gonna just add to the top and you'll come back and add to the bottom. Now, the really neat thing is that I need a whole nother row of this. So I don't have to redo that because I want it on the opposite side. I'm simply going to go edit and go mirror. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to leave that one unmirrored. We're going to go order and add it on, add one to the opposite side. We'll cut them apart. And when we cut them apart, then we can then keep those separate. Tell it okay. I only have a red box around that one. We'll mirror that one and we'll move it to the opposite side. And then I'll select the other one so you guys can see it. And so look at how, so you can see, this is how you build. This is how you start this. That's how easy it is. And you just continue adding row after row after row. This is a time you probably definitely want to zoom so you can make sure the rows touch together and you keep everything lined up evenly to fill in your hoop. But that'll give you your built-in. That's how you can make lace. Two layers of tool. And I do sew that with matching top and bottom thread. And it depends on the look. If you want the lace shiny, you're going to use embroidery thread. If you want it to look more antique or more uh, uh, subtle, then you'll use a cotton embroidery thread. So that's how you determine which thread you use. But matching top and bottom, two layers of tool or netting. English net is the finest and will work the best. But four layers of water-soluble stabilizer, two on the top and two on the bottom. Yes, the film, the film type of water-soluble stabilizer, that's how, what you're going to put in your hoop. So, so Lewis, have, you said four layers. I'm just making sure that they got this. Four layers. Are you talking about the water topper or the wash away? The water topper. So you'll want to put two layers, the two layers of the netting, and then two more layers on top. So you have six layers that go in your hoop. So you have water topper, two layers of water topper, two layers of tool, and two layers of water topper. Exactly. That's so that your stitches do get distorted as they're stitching out on the tool because that tool, that netting is very fine. It's like hardly anything to it, right? So right. that's going to make it so that it'll do that. Do I have right. time to show one last thing? Oh, sure. They're just... Oh, good. I think they're, by the way, everybody is absolutely loving this. And um, I just want, there was one quick thing while you're here on the screen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Joanna says this is going to be fantastic <laughs> because <laughs> everything's going to match. Oh, Arnell, Arnell, I can probably guarantee you it's yes, but Arnell wanted to know is all that thread on that last bag you showed, is that all brother embroidery thread? Yes, that's all the brother, um, our pace setter. And then we have the Simplicity Pro brother, uh, several different lines of thread, but they're all under the brother umbrella of threading. Yes. And then Stephanie, by the way, I'm, I'm going to answer this one real quick because he's using the Luminaire right now. But a lot of people are saying, what software is this? What software is this? This is actually built into that machine and it's built into many machines. So check your machine for this border feature. I'm going to show you what that looks like in two seconds. So you'll see it again. All you have to have is border and border goes back at least a decade, I want to say, if not longer. So even if you have an older machine, you probably have border on that machine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is a great question from Dorothy. And will this, is, this sew out from top to bottom? Border? Well, it will sew that row and then jump back up to the top to sew the next one, except on my luminaire, I can tell it what order to sew in. There you so go, you, Dorothy. 
hide if you if you if that's an important feature to you i recommend you get a luminaire because you can determine what sews when you can change the sewing order uh with the latest update if you have a luminaire you want to make sure you have your upgrade um kit because that was part of the upgrade is that it, you can tell the machine what order to sew in yes oh All right. you guys are so sweet i'm gonna do one last thing because everybody wants to do name tags right let me show you how easy it is to make some name tags in this we're gonna go and we're gonna choose the square hey lewis switch your cameras will you oh yeah right i got my back again i'm like i get so excited see i'm like okay i gotta <laughs> All right, I got my square. That came from shapes, right? So all that did was come from the shapes and embroidery. So I'm going to change it to be more of a rectangle because I need it to be uh, a, like a tag, right? So we're going to make it go small, narrower, and I'm getting it as narrow as I can. And I need it to be a little bit wider for my name. So you have to play around with this to see what fit what will fit your name or whatever name you're putting in there right i just happen to know mine because i played with it a little earlier so mine will fit in this size right so i have the one yes everybody with me so now that i have one i'm going to tell it okay and we're going to go and do border just like before so we're going to go and tell it i'm going to add to the top so you determine how many you need, right? So we're going to say you need so many of these little name tags, right? And we're going to slide it over. You'll want to be able to cut them apart, so you should give some space in between them. So there's one set, and I need a second set of these. There I have it, and I need some space in between those to cut them apart, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, and I could fit even more. So I got sixteen labels right here, right? Well, doesn't do any good to just stitch a little frame, does it? And nobody know who you are. So let's go. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, what's the point, right? It's like, okay, well, that's. Hey, kinda... Lewis, I'll give you. I've got a class coming in April with hands on. There's 12 of us. I'm going to give you all their names, and you can make these cards. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> so look, and I'll tell you, like I tell my sisters, I um. I, I do, I am easy, but I'm not cheap. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and add my name. So I'm going to choose L. And so I want that one to be in my small because that'll fit. And then we're going to go lowercase. So I'll just type my name quickly. Does help if you know how to spell. Add a space. We got to go back to uppercase, get my last name. And you all, all know my name. So if you don't, this is how you would know it. Please look at it on the screen and make sure that if you like this and you would like to see more things like this and other things that will be upcoming, to go to my website, lewiscarney.com, and sign up for the newsletter because that will get you information about the upcoming events. So here's lewis carney right that's my name i'm going to my border i had eight of these right one two three four five six seven eight space them move them space them move them guys i'm telling you it's gonna get any easier now notice they didn't all line up well they're not going to because of the way I did it in border, but we can cut them, remember? So if we separate them and I cut this first one, then I could move it. So I'm like, okay, I wanna come to this next one. And then I wanna tell it to go down to the next one. And I'm gonna tell it to move that one. And I'm gonna go, and now each of these are cut. So we're gonna make sure they're all independently cut, ungroup them. Okay to delete the seal of the thread. Yes, it is okay. So now you can just touch on one. And when you have one or selected, now you can go to your move and you can move that one and center it, right? And go down to the next one or up to the, that one and move that one. Can you guys see what's happening? And I'm just centering it. I'm gonna choose the next one. And that one centered, this one can come up. And so you would do that so on, so on, so forth, right? So I'm gonna select 
that one right there, just so that it's because that one's irritating. Okay, so now I have those there. Now these are all ungrouped, but I need a whole nother set of these. So if I go and I tell it what I want to select, and oh, we don't want to select all, reset. We're going to tell it, no, I don't want that. We want, okay, back here. It has only red boxes around the name. Group them again, border. Yes, it's okay to change. We need one horizontal. We'll add one to the side. Oh, wrong side. And we'll add a second set, and it'll put a second set of names. Now, don't make it just boring. So I'm going to show you really quick because I want you to see how cool this is. Oh, undo that. Look, it duplicated everything because I had everything selected back over here. So I want I don't want everything selected. So now I'm going to tell it, no, don't select that. So let's go through and only select what you want. But I need another name, but I'm going to go ahead really quick. And I want you guys to watch up here at the top. And we'll get only that one selected. And keep going through to get red boxes around the one you want. Oh, too far. There it is. The letters are separated, right? And if you hit the T, the text, now when you hit array, and now if you hit angle, and now we're going to close that one in. And do you see what it's doing? It's putting them at an angle. I love that. And I'm going to tap OK, tap set. There that is. I'm going to add and go back to my decorative stitches. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom because I want to put a uh, personalize these. And I'm going to put a little dinosaur in mine. So now I have my little dinosaur. We'll edit, rotate them. And I'm going to move it so you guys can see. And I'm going to have dinosaur. <laughs> if I saw that on the screen, I would think it was a spider. I'd be smacking the screen. <laughs> I will zoom that a little bit more so you guys can see how just adorable that is. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it, it can't get cu any cuter, guys. But you can personalize. So now the tip. Okay, so that was the easy part, right? You just go in there and you're playing. You're going to play around. The real tip that I normally charge extra for. <laughs> I charge a lot. So you can put a check in the mail. No. The tip is you're going to sew this with fusible thread in the bobbin and iron on stabilizer upside down under the hoop. And you will have made a fusible name badge. All right. So I'm going to write this down so it goes <laughs> they get it correctly. Fusible thread, you guys in got that? Bobbin. Fusible thread in the bobbin. So, you, and you have to wind it, that doesn't come pre wound. You buy, buy a spool of that. Okay. And then, iron on stabilizer. You want to peel the paper away from the iron on part. Now, you have everything in your hoop like normal. This is just going to slide under the hoop upside down so that the iron part is facing your base of your machine. So that then now when you go and you cut these out, and I use a hot cut tool to trim around those. So if you use a hot cut tool to trim around it, if you use a polyester thread to do your embroidery, you wanna use that because polyester threads, if your hot cut tool gets too close, it'll just melt, it won't burn. Rayons will burn. So then, when you cut it away, and now it's all fusible. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I got it all noted. For so, so when I get the emails, <laughs> I can just copy and paste it. But you should go to his website, by the way. I just put Lewis's website below here. So you got blog.brothersows, you got my website, you got Lewis's. Go sign up for the newsletters because you'll hear about um, new events coming up. But Lewis, this was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Well, I love the border feature. I have just barely touched the surface of what you can do with border. Guys, when I tell you so versatile, so many things, so many options, like right now, if you took the shapes, you could even take that and go over again, copy it, make it do an applique, send it to the scan and cut, 
use it with one of the um, stamp uh, things and you can make a cookie cutter and make personalized cookie cutters for when you're baking cookies. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's like, go, you know, uh. <laughs> it's a lot, guys. There's so much to do. Explore your machines. You have so much built in on them. This is all stuff that's built in. I didn't add anything. I didn't buy anything. All I used was already built in on the machine. And oh my God. I mean, literally, I could just spend the rest of my life just playing on a machine and never sell anything because it has just that much. But again, any machine that has these nine boxes. So you want it to have these dark boxes has the border feature. It does not have to be a brand new machine. It does not have to be the top of the line machine. So please explore. Have a good time. Play. And let me see what comes up. And I hope I get to come back. I have an idea, actually, Lewis, and you might have to, I might have to have bring you back in while we're, we're starting a Rachel, my Rachel twin set sew along next Wednesday. And it's a sweater. It's like a loose sweater with a tank top. And I could Ooh. see using that border feature along the edge of this whole, this is like one of the the flowing sweaters. I could see oh. using that border feature right along there with matching thread on each side. So that way, whichever way it flipped, you would have like, that would be very cool. Or contrasting thread. So you have two different white colors. Oh, and but what a perfect cool. place to use a border hoop because then it just slides along that edge. Oh, I like that. I like that it's a lot. Very so I so think I hope that this was informative. I hope you guys saw, learned something or saw something that was interesting. But explore again those features. Explore, explore. Lewis, this was awesome. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any last minute questions. Everybody say thank you. And don't forget you can watch the replay. Don't forget to go to Lewis's website. Hopefully I see you. Sign up for my newsletter, and that way you'll get more classes and more ideas and tips and tricks that's upcoming it's not quite all the way there yet not like angela's <laughs> no they're coming though actually speaking of classes you guys if anybody's looking for surging 102 which i'm showing how to do some more decorative stitches on your serger that is uh friday at noon and you can enter to win that class if you want if you go to my blog uh angelawolf.com click on blog oh. and you leave a comment and I will randomly draw somebody to win. I'm doing the rolled hem. That's that's one of the big things. So, Lewis, I love the serger. I absolutely love the serger. But the rolled hem seems to be such a nemesis for people where it fall, the fabric falls off and you can't get it back on. How do you go all the way around and uh, not end up with a bunch of threads? <laughs> I love the serger. Yes, and so you're going to show them all that? Yep, show all that. How about I the have flat lock? So, Lewis, six have you surgers. I love surgers. I was like the surgery king. I like love surgery. So, Lewis, I'll bet you you froze for a sec. So, hopefully, you come back. Um, have you it's played? It's kind of frozen. I think you're back. The flat lock stitch. I could see that on all your bags with the flat lock stitch on the back side, running ribbon in and out of it. Oh and now, um. And so for guys, if you are do interiors or do interior decorating, the serger and a flat lock stitch. When we, um, I work with some several designers in New York and uh, like there are several, you know, socialites that have big parties or whatever. And they had to have table linens, tablecloths. Well, those tablecloths have to, you know, we don't line tablecloths anymore. We use uh, felt liners to go under them. Well, you use a flat lock for a circular tablecloth and that when you lay it open flat because it doesn't create a ridge under your tablecloth. So where the glasses will sit. Oh, my gosh, that's brilliant. I love, that. <laughs> I love the flat lock. Stitches. I actually um, you know what I made last year was I took a bunch of not a bunch, but I cut up a bunch of pieces of fleece because I was trying to make a cool scarf. And instead mm -hmm. of just serging them together, I did the flat lock stitch for each piece with different colored thread. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It was almost like putting a puzzle together. <laughs> I imagine, I mean, and just, uh, I mean, it's, and just think that no, it will never come out that way again. So that every time you do it, even if it's the same fabric, the same thread, it will always come out different. So what yeah. a great gift idea if you got to make some for kids. 
or make some for some gifts for a bunch of people, especially if they're in the same family. Theirs will never look the same, no matter that you use the same fabric, because you'll always grab a piece. You just grab a piece. <laughs> that is so true. Everybody's saying, Louis, they love this. Oh, I cannot wait till you're back. Louis, oh. uh, I, I won't even ask what our next project is, because by then you might be on to like six more. <laughs> and there'll be something new and fabulous that we don't all know about. So we'll still have to touch base. Because I'm, you know, me, my mind is like, okay, I'll be there right now. But then tomorrow I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> That's how I am. You should see, I got squirrels all over my office right now. That's why you're only looking at this way. Because I've got squirrel section over here, squirrel section over there. <laughs> yeah, oh, you no. see where I'm focused at right now. You guys don't want to see the rest. Well, I'm not going to let you see the rest right now. <laughs> but I would so have loved to you that want to follow when Lewis comes back. I have now put schedules on my website and Lewis, you'll probably be sending your newsletter out too. If you go to AngelaWolf.com, yes. click on uh, classes and schedule and you'll see the whole live schedule. And I make sure I include whoever's coming on there. So mark your calendar. Lewis, thank you so much. This was so much fun. It was a great time and thanks for having me guys. I hope that this was informative. I hope it was fun. I hope you use your machine. Talk to your dealers about these great accessory hoops because they will make all of what we just did so much easier. So the point of this being easy on the machine, when you actually go to stitch it, you need it to be easy also. So find out about which particular hoops will fit your machine. And uh, the again, um, ask them also about the Brother Metallic threads. You will be so happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Have a great weekend. Bye. And don't forget, So Easy is at noon on Saturday uh, on Brother Page. So thanks, Brother, for letting us take over your page. Bye. Have Bye, Louis. Have a wonderful day. Always. <laughs>